All right, this is Boxing with the Truth, and you're here with the Truth on January 13, 2015, and we're here with Prospect Amir Imam. How are you doing today? What's going on, man? How you doing? Pretty good. Right. I appreciate uh, you taking time to do an interview with me. I know you have a big fight coming up in the next couple days, and uh, we'll get to that in a minute. But uh, for the fans that aren't really familiar with you, because like I said, you are a prospect, you are coming up, and uh, I just want to go over a little background so the, the fans can get to know you a little bit, okay? All right. All right, so your, uh, your amateur record before you turned pro was actually 98-14, and 14, is that correct? Yeah. Okay, and you are out of New York, but you live down in Florida now? Yeah. Okay. And you actually, um, like I said, you were a pretty impressive amateur. You had you, you won the um the New York State Golden Gloves five consecutive years, right? New York State, yeah. Yep, New York State. And then uh you were a finalist at the two thousand ten um PAL Nationals and you were an Olympic alternate or alternate, right? Okay, and you're uh, you're 24 right now, and you um, fight at super lightweight, but you've also fought at junior welterweight, right? No, just junior welterweight. Oh my career, just junior welterweight. Okay, is there a reason why they have you listed right now at super lightweight? Super lightweight, I guess that's the same thing as junior welterweight. Super lightweight, lightweight is probably 135. I'm not sure. Okay, and your and your nickname is actually Young Master. Yeah, okay. Master. So tell me how you came up with Young Master. Um, my coach uh, came up with it by the name of an uh, old fighter, Joe Gans, the old master. And, you know, we took it and, and ran with it and made it the Young Master because I'm young. I'm not old. Okay. And it's come from master in the craft of boxing and, you know, the sweet science of it too. Doing things that guys can't do and putting it all together in a ring. Okay, now your pro record is actually 15 wins with 13 knockouts and zero losses. Yeah. Okay, and according to BoxRec, you are ranked in the United States ranking at number 16 in the world ranking at 46. Yeah. So that's pretty impressive. How do you feel about all that? I'm just blessed, man. I keep working hard. I know my day is coming. I feel good about it. I worked hard for it, man, you know? I put everything into it, and everything is showing, coming out. Okay, and right now, you actually do have a title. You have the NABA USA um, Super Lightweight title, correct? Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Okay, and you are signed by Don King, right? Yes. Yeah. And for boxing fans out there that don't know who Don King is, you must have just became a boxing fan, because I think every boxing fan is aware of Don King. <laughs> yeah. So, I actually read a quote by Don King just a couple days ago, and I don't know if you've seen this quote yet, but uh, this, this was pretty impressive, and um, I, I want to know how you feel about this. Don King said, you are the next Felix Trinidad. I mean, I'm blessed, man, to even have my name mentioned with, a, you know, a legend, a guy that accomplished what he did like that, and it's only going to get better, man. Looking forward to fighting a lot, man, 2015. And as long as my name keeps getting mentioned with um, people that did great things in the sport of boxing, and I know I'm doing something right. Okay, but now, what type of guy are you? Do you, do you feel pressure a lot? Do you handle pressure easy? I mean, because you're undefeated. <laughs> You, you you have a guy like Don King that signs you. You have a guy like Don King making references that you're the next Felix Trinidad. Um, there's people that are making statements that that say, um, you know, that you're going to walk through people, that you dismantle people. That You know, do you feel a lot of pressure from the, the people around you saying things like that you have a lot of expectations on you? No, I don't feel up there. That's motivation. That made me, you know, work harder and want to get the fans what they want to see, you know. There's no pressure. I've been doing this since knee high. This is what I do, you know. Even though I thought it's not professional, but I've been boxing since knee high, man. I'm, you know, ready to fight anybody, man. Okay, let's talk about that a little. How exactly did you get involved in boxing? Uh, there's a group of friends. We always went to the gym. One, like, one or two of them already was going, but... 
we all went together and then I'm the one that stuck it to it in a bunch and now I'm there today, you know? I used to go to the gym, you know, just to get the speed back, and then all of a sudden, you know, I started getting into the boxing line more, and then I just fell in love with it, now I'm here, man. But. Okay, so, um, what type of boxing style do you consider yourself having? Uh, boxer puncher, you, f you mean as far as who, like a person? No, no, just like you said, boxer puncher. Yeah, boxer puncher. I don't go for the knockout, but, you know, they just... It just happened when I fight, you know. It's part of the game. Hit and not be hit, man. I mean, the quicker you get your guy out there, the better it is for you. You don't want to, you know, take no damage. You don't need to. So is there actually a boxer out there that you've grown up watching that you try to emulate? Uh, I watch a lot of old school fighters like Sir Ray Thomas and Joe Gans, the guy, you know, the game we took in. Uh, a lot of old school like Jack Johnson. Jackie Robinson, uh, a lot of old school fighters. Okay, and that's kind of rare. And my skills from something you see me doing in the ring, and that's where I, I get it from. That's kind of rare for a, for a young guy of, of your age of 24 to, to really be watching some of those old guys. Most guys your age would tell me that's Floyd May. That's where it all started, man, you know. People forget that, and they don't look back at that. They just, you know, do what, what it is nowadays, and... See, but that don't know history or doomed, you know, to repeat it. Well, see, most most guys your age would tell me Floyd Mayweather. So I'm glad that you do know your history, and I'm glad that it sounds like you're a student of the game. Yeah, I'm a student of the game, man. I know a lot of old school fighters. I'd rather watch old school than what it is today, I'll tell you, man. So Today is just off the chain, man. Right? <laughs> Boss now and is just it's different than old school. It's not, the best is not fighting the best. No, you're right. Today, I think it's all about the zeros, and I don't think it's about the pride and fighting the best. <laughs> I have to agree with you there. Do you have any superstitions or rituals or habits before a fight? Nah, not really, nah. Just regular old me, just be me. You stay relaxed, composed, and wait till it's fight time and put on a show. Do you have a favorite boxing movie? Do I have a what? A favorite boxing movie? Um, Ali. I like the Ali. That was a good movie. Okay. Show what he went through and what he pushed through, you know, while he was still boxing. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, it's inspirational, you know. It inspires young people to do that they can do what they want to do. They put their mind on to it, you know. So do you consider yourself a silent boxer and you just get in the ring and do your work or do you like to engage with trash talk with your opponents? I'm a solid boxer, but if it comes to that, I can do that too. So it doesn't matter to me. I can adjust. I can do what I have to do to get that win. And I will do what I have to do to get the win. Okay, and I just thought, before we get to the fight coming up, which is actually January 17th, on the undercard of the heavyweights, um, Stavern and Wilder. I just want everybody to know that on Showtime. Tune in because this is the first fight on the um, t televised card. Uh, Fidel Malinato Jr. versus Amir Iman, which is going to be an explosive fight because both of these guys have knockout power. They're both very slick and they're both very smart fighters. So nobody wants to wait until the heavyweight fight to turn into this because to tune into this card because you guys are definitely going to miss a great fight. So let's, first I just want to touch on one other fighter before we get to Fidel. Errol Spencer Jr. Now you lost to him in the, in the Olympic trials. Do you want to fight him in your pro career to redeem that loss? If, if the fight comes to where I have to happen, yeah, I'll fight him, man. I'm not here to fight nobody, man. I will fight anybody. But I mean, like you said, if it ever comes, you know, some pro boxers down the line, their weight starts fluctuating and they bounce up and down between two, three weights. Like you said, if it comes down to it, you, would you just want to redeem that loss from the amateurs? Oh, yeah. It comes down to it and everything is right. Of course, yeah, I would definitely like to. 
Okay, so now let's talk about the fight January 17th. Fidel Malinato Jr. Now, I did an interview with him a week ago. Have you listened to that interview? Uh. Well, let me tell you this. He didn't talk trash on you. He didn't say anything bad. I just said to him, like I'm going to say to you, based on your record and who you fought and who he's fought, you guys, is, both of your knockouts seem to come around the second round. So, with that much power, this fight might not even go past the fourth round. <laughs> Well, personally, I see you guys as two very smart fighters, so I honestly don't see you two standing in the middle of the ring just trading punches like two street fighters trying to knock each other out. I think this is going to be a strategic fight, just like a game of chess. I think you guys are going to feel each other out for the first couple rounds, and if the knockout comes, it comes either way. That's the way I think it's going to happen. Yeah, that's how it goes, how it goes for me, man. I don't go out there just, oh, I'm going to knock them out. Nah, that's how you, you fall off your game plan, and then you end up letting people get rounds in the bank, and then all of a sudden, you come to a decision, you lost. you like, what the heck? Nah, I don't do that. So now, I read a statement today, and I want to see how you feel about this. It said, Fidel Malinato Jr. has fought a better class of fighters, but Amir is going to walk right through him. I read a statement today that said Fidel Malinato Jr. has fought the better class of fighters than Amir, but Amir is going to walk right through Fidel. Yeah, man. Um, better class of fighters. I mean, that does help. That helps, but he, he didn't fight me, so I'm not worried about who he fought. He fought them. He didn't fight me, so I don't care who he fought. But, I mean, how do you feel about that statement that you're going to walk right through him? This is motivation and makes you want to go hard and then get the fans what they want to see. Okay, and now this isn't your first time on a TV fight, though. You fought on Showbox, you fought on ESPN, right? Yeah. So you're kind of used to the, the whole TV thing, the crowds, the lights, and all that. That doesn't make you nervous? Yeah, I'm used to it. Okay. Do you consider this the biggest fight of your career? Okay, now up until yesterday, you guys weren't fighting for a belt, and then it was announced that you guys are fighting for the vacant WBC Continental America's Super Lightweight title, right? Yeah, I just found that out yesterday, too. So, how did you feel when you heard that? Oh, man, you know, I was just hyped, man, just ready to go, man, just ready to get that belt. That's just one step closer to where, you know, getting a title shot. So, that's just more motivation to want to beat him, right? So, here's a question I got for you. Um, who do you think has more to lose in this fight? You or him? Um, um, I got more to lose. I'm thinking I got more to lose, man. I can't lose this fight. I'm 50, you know, I'm a good prospect coming at the tender, and I'm getting I'm right at the door. I can't lose this fight because if I lose this fight, I'll start all over. Okay, so if you weren't a pro boxer, what do you think you'd be doing? Oh man, I have no clue, man. Boxing is, boxing saved me. I don't know what I'd be doing if I was a boxer. I really don't. Okay, what's something that your boxing fans don't know about you? Uh, a lot of fans don't know that I got that 
young basketball from the old Joe Gans, because a lot of fans don't really know about the old school fighters and Joe Gans, the old master. So I would say that. Okay, and you're right. I had no idea where your nickname came from, and that's why I asked you, because I was kind of curious myself. Yeah. So, seeing that the fans, some boxing fans, hardcore fans, you know, that study prospects and watch people come up, know who you are, know who Fidel is, but for the fans that don't, that are just coming out to watch the two heavyweight guys fight, why should the fans come out and watch you and Fidel Malinado Jr. fight on January 17th? This is going to be an action-packed fight. Two fighters that got something to prove to the boxing world then. So, with the first fight of the night, man, we're going to, you know, kick it off with a bang, man. And I'm going to show everybody why they call me the Young Master. They don't just say it just to say the Young Master. The Young Master has meaning to it. With craft and everything. And I'm going to show everybody come Saturday, January 17th. Okay, and so what do you think you got to do to win this fight convincingly? Um, you know, just mm, box this guy, and if that if that opportunity comes with that knockout, I'm gonna take take advantage of it. Best believe I'm take advantage of it. But I can box this kid. I know I can box this kid. So basically, if the knockout doesn't come, you're prepared for a war. I'm prepared for a ten round. Well, honestly, I think the fans would love to see a knockout either way or a oh, war because I both of you. Both of you guys can box. Both of you guys are real skilled, real crafty, and you guys got power. I mean, it, it, it would be great to see a war between the two of you. But like I said, honestly, in my opinion, I don't know which way it's going to go, but somebody's probably going to get knocked out. Yeah, somebody, somebody yeah. <laughs> There's just too much power in that fight. <laughs> you call fight out Saturday night. Somebody get knocked out, huh? And, uh... Okay, I'm going to end the interview on this question. Uh, I've appreciated your time. I know you're very busy. You're trying to get ready for the fight and try to stay focused. So, the heavyweight fight, Stavern against Wilder. What's your prediction? I got Stavern. If Stavern presses the fight, I got Stavern. If he sits back and let Wilder, you know, because Wilder's longer and let Wilder have the advantage of being tall, then he can, he can come to... Uh, uh, 12 round decision loss, you know, but if he touched Wilder on the chin, it's all she wrote. And that's what I believe in. That's what I'm sticking to. So basically, if the burn touches Wilder on the chin, it's over. And if you touch yeah. fella, if you touch Fidel on the chin, it could be over too. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'll end the interview with... Don King, the best promoter in the business. Say that again? Don King, the best promoter in the business. Okay, and everybody just heard that. A shout out for Don King. Can't forget Don King. No, I can't forget him. He's the one doing the show, man. But I am just one to be it. All right, well, listen. Um, good luck uh, on the 17th. Uh, I hope it's a fight. You know, I hope you get the win. And uh, hopefully you even get the knockout, man, and, and be able to add one more to your list and, and stay undefeated. All right, thank you, man. I appreciate the interview. No problem, and the truth has spoken.